In this video, we're going to take a look at both of the rigged slot machine challenges from the Integrity Lead Tip Live CTF 2024. The first challenge was part of the warm-up category and the second challenge was part of the pwn category. I'm going to start with the second challenge because this is actually the challenge I intended to make from the beginning and I realized there was an unintended solution in it which I just decided to make as a warm-up challenge. So let's start off with rigged slot machine 2. As you can see, I've already checked the file type and also looked at the binary protections that are enabled. So these can give us some clues as to what might be involved in the pwn challenge. For example, there are no canaries on the stack, which means we can overflow the buffer without it crashing with one of those stack smashing detected messages. So it's a bit of a hint that there might be a buffer overflow here. We've also got NX enabled, which means we can't execute any shell code that we inject onto the stack. So we probably rule out that kind of challenge. And we might also want to know whether pi is enabled, so we know whether the addresses will be fixed each time the binary loads, or whether we might need to leak some addresses if we were going to do like a return to libc attack. Let's also just try and run the binary and see what happens. We just want to get an idea what the basic functionality is. You can see it asks for the name, and then it's going to ask us to enter a bet amount. We can do up to $100 per spin, providing we have enough balance left, of course. And as you can see, I'm going through... Putting in $1 bets don't seem to be doing too well. We could try and change the bet amount and then we just run out of money very quickly. So we probably want to check our two different inputs. One was the name and one was the bet amount. Let's start with the name. Let's just try and put in a really long name and then we'll try and put in a $1 bet. And notice that our balance has suddenly jumped up to a very high number. So we've identified an overflow, but we probably want to see what's going on and what's the condi condition that we need to meet in order to get the flag. To do that, I'm going to close this down. Oops, I'll do Control and C, and then I'm going to open up Girdra. I've got a little auto alias thing, which is just going to save me a little bit of time, but I'll speed through this anyway. So we've got the code from our main function, and you might want to go and start just renaming some variables here so things make a little bit more sense. We have our name, which is being loaded into this local 28. So I'll just hit L to rename that and I'll rename it to name, and now you can see it's renamed the declaration of that variable up here as well. So it's a 24 byte buffer. And let's see what else we can rename. We've also got the bet amount, which is being loaded into 2C. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, just say the bet amount. We can have a look what's in this data section. It's percentage D. I'm just gonna rename that as well, just so I know exactly what it is. And what are we out of? Here is local 10. That is our starting balance, so let's rename that. Starting balance, oh, okay, it's gonna be updated as we go through, so let's just call it balance. And am I missing anything? Well, we've got this check down here. I don't really know what this is in hex. It looks pretty hard to decipher, but if we change its decimal, you can see it's 1337420. So if our balance equals this value in decimal, it's gonna call this payout function, which we can go and have a look at as well. Not too much here, it's just making sure that it's going to be 1337420, and if it is, it's going to print out the flag. So there's our goal. We need to overwrite the balance on the stack, which we've already done. We just put in loads of A's and we put it up to a really high number. We need it to be a very specific number, which is 1337420. Um, was there anything else here? Local C was our input, right? That was our bet. I don't know what happens to that. Oh. User input, let me change that too. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go close this down now anyway. What I will also do is just set up a breakpoint somewhere in GDB. We can see that this comparison is happening right here. So maybe we take a copy of this and then we can go and set up a breakpoint whenever we're dynamically analyzing it. So I'll minimize this and I'm going to open up GDB pwn debug with the binary. And you could also disassemble this in here. You could just go and disassemble main. So there's no need for us really to open up Girdra unless you want to get the decompile code because we could have just gone in here and found out, okay, there is a comparison happening right here. And this is where we want to set the breakpoints. So if I take a copy of that and say break star and then put in the address, there we go. It's set up a breakpoint. Now, every time it gets this comparison, it's going to jump in and let us see what's in the stack and what's in the registers and things so that we can debug it. I'm also going to do, in fact, let's just do this normally. Let's just like run it. I'll put in cat. I'll put in a $1 spin. Here we go. It's hit the breakpoint, And you can see it stopped at that instruction. It's comparing what's in the EAX with this literal value. And we know that this is 1337420 in hex. And we can have a look what's in the EAX. It is 63 in hex, which we can just do also here. 
Unhex, 63. Oh, well, it's a C. That's not going to help us. Okay, it's 99. So we started off with $100. We did a $1 bet. So we've now got $99. And it's going to subtract that from 1337420 to see whether we're left with a zero, which we won't be because obviously subtracting that from that isn't going to leave us a zero. So that's what we need to do. What I'm going to do now is generate a cyclic pattern of 64 bytes. I'll take a copy of this. I'll run the program again. And this time we'll put this in as a name. We'll do a $1 spin again. It's going to hit that breakpoint. And what I'm interested in is what made it into this part of the comparison. So again, we could do the unhex and do like unhex. That is, oops. Oh, I was supposed to do the exclamation mark. Pwn debug has changed its syntax around as of recent, so there we go. Okay, that didn't actually look quite the same as the last time I did it, as far as I remember, but uh, let me try again, let me try again. I'm going to do run. Let me paste in, oh no. Let's generate a cyclic pattern, 64 bytes. Take a copy of it. Let's run again, put in the name, $1 spin. And yeah, this time we get a different result. I think maybe I'd continued in that last one, although it did ask me for the name again. I'm not sure. All right, well, this is what we've got this time, which is what I remember getting last time. And that is, as you can see, 6.3 is lowercase c, and then the a's. So this is where our input is ending up. So we want to find out what is the offset of that in the cyclic pattern that we provided. So I'll do cyclic-l to look up the offset. I'll paste that in, and it'll tell us that was at 16 bytes. So if we were to do 16, in fact, let's do this now. Let's do, uh, let me do AAA. We'll do 16 A's. And then let's try and do some B's. I'm going to do it like this because I just want to show, in fact, no, let's do it like this. All right. So we've got 16 A's and we've got eight B's. All right. So let's run it again. You can tell it's been a while since I did any pwn, maybe, but um, yeah. All right, $1 bet. Notice that it didn't let us do the bet because our current balance is zero and it didn't go into that breakpoint. So that's interesting. We have zero balance. Let's do this again. Let me run and let me paste that in. And this time let's add an extra B and we'll do a $1 spin. And notice this, now we've got 41 in there. So if we were to do again, unhex, 41, that's a capital A. Now we had a capital B at the end, but remember every time we do a bet, it's gonna take one away from our balance. So what's essentially happened there is we've overwritten our balance with a capital B, and then we've done a bet, and then it's reduced it by one, which has turned it into a capital A. So what happened there? Well, if we run this again, I just wanna show basically, we've got a 24 byte buffer, right? If we run this again, and now in this time, we'll do 23 bytes instead of 24 or 25, do a one dollar bet and everything should look normal we're back to the 63 and basically it's the null terminator so whenever we have a 24 byte string like that it's actually 23 bytes and then a null terminator at the end so as soon as we do 24 bytes we're getting rid of that null terminator and the stack basically doesn't know the difference between one string and another because you didn't put that null terminator there hopefully that makes sense let me just do it one more time let's do our name again, let's put in here two extra Bs at the end, $1 spin, and this time you see 4241. All right, so the issue is now we need to get this, and if I go and unhex this, this is the 1337420. If I go and unhex it, notice that's not right because we've got two characters back, and then here we've got one, we've got two, we've got three. So some of our data is being lost which means it's simply not going to work. So we're going to have to do the rest with Pwn Tools. And I've already got a script set up for this. Let me just open it up. Standard Pwn Tools script. So you can just provide a debug parameter if you want to debug with GDB. You can provide a remote parameter if you want to run it remotely. If not, it'll just run locally. We give it a binary name. We set up a login level and we just want to start the program. It's going to ask for the name and we're going to send it 24 A's followed by the number that we want at the balance. And you'll see then, yeah, it's going to send that after the name and then it's just going to go into interactive. So let's try it. We run it and notice we don't get a flag. So let's try and put in a $1 bet and notice that our bet is now going down. So probably a better idea here is to change that script so that instead of going to 420, it'll go to 4, 
21. Do it again. And now we just need to lose a dollar. And there we go, we get our flag. So what about part one of this challenge? Well, I also created some other scripts in here. As you can see, I've got a brute 100 and a brute random. And I basically got to the end of this and realized that if you were to just write a script, just keep sending random bets or just keep sending like a $1 bet or a $10 bet, if you run the program enough times, you'd eventually get the flag and just have it automated like that. So you skip the whole pwn challenge, which is not what I wanted. And the reason that was happening is because I didn't have the odds set up as the same as I do now. So if we go back to Geardra and where are the odds set up in here? I can't actually remember. Let's go to... Play. Okay, we've got to play. All right, so here's the amounts. And basically, what's happening is it's doing a random. So it's basically saying there's a one in a thousand chance of 10 times in your money. Whereas if you go to the old version, which is now part one, this was a 100. So one in every 100 attempts would multiply your score, your bet by, and I don't think it was actually 10, it was set to 100, if I'm not mistaken. So you could basically just do a loop and do like 100 times and you're pretty much guaranteed then to have one of those games start with a 100 times bonus. So it'll turn your dollar into $100 and then you can just keep doing that and basically looping through it. So yeah, I made sure that I changed the odds for the pwn challenge so it really isn't solvable without doing the binary exploitation. But if we go back to, let's go back to the rigged one and let me just run the binary first of all. So if we put in a $1 bet here, you'll see that we actually, we do get some wins. All right, we're still getting quite a lot of losses. I did change the odds as well. I played around with it a little bit. It's not as easy as it first was, but oops, let's see here then. We have a solve script. And yeah, we're basically going to say here, we know what the winning threshold is for this one. It's 133742. And we're going to loop 100 times and we're going to start the program each time. And we're basically just going to send a $10 bet and we're going to keep sending $10 bets until we get the flag. Yeah, it's, it's basically just brute forcing, but you do need to do a little bit of automation because there's a, an alarm. So the slot machine will overheat after a few minutes. So you can't just manually do this. And you see even there, I did like 100 attempts. We didn't get the flag, but then I run it again. And you can see that one of those, basically one in every 100 on average will work. It gets to 133742. Oh, it didn't stop. It was supposed to stop there. All right, apparently there was a small issue with my script. I guess I must have been running an old version. Let me just try it again. There we go. So it hits the right amount this time and it gets the flag. And yeah, the problem was with the previous script, it just wasn't exiting the script. So we're looping 100 times. And even if it got the flag, it wasn't actually exiting. But it seems to be more reliable now. Okay, so that's it. That's how we can solve the two rig slot machine challenges. As I say, I wasn't planning to make two challenges. I just planned on making a pwn challenge and then just accidentally had not unintended and thought, okay, well, there's a free warm-up challenge. So hopefully people still liked it. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.